Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook in discussion for May 19th, 2022, current on 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And today's video update will be mainly focused around the Orlando area and Central Florida and what impacts the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season could have on the local area. And if you guys want to know more specifically about your local area, make sure to comment that in the comment section down below. I'll try to respond to every comment and make dedicated videos about it. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get the show rolling. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not much is occurring across the area. We do have a little area of disturbed weather down here in the Caribbean near Central America. Longtime followers will know that this is part of a Central American gyre, basically just convergence with the wind here from the Eastern Pacific and then the trade winds across the Caribbean. This is basically helping to induce an area of enhanced rotation or spin in the atmosphere and this will be setting up rainfall for Central America just basically this enhanced period of rainfall uh, mudslides flash flooding all nasty conditions down there but in terms of tropical development we should be spared from anything and if anything does occur I think we'll be mainly focused out here in the eastern Pacific over the next several days or so. Now, taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly map, this is very important for dictating what could occur during the upcoming hurricane season, especially during the peak months for Florida, especially in September and October. Typically, that's when our peak months in central Florida are in the Orlando area for being impacted. Uh, most notoriously, we've had our intense hurricanes during those two months and we receive most of our hurricane impacts during those two months alone compared to any other months during the hurricane season. So in the equatorial Pacific, this actually has a big impact on the Atlantic tropical regions because this area, what we call the Nino 3-4, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index, basically it's just a measuring of the temperature patterns across a specific area. And in this case here, we have water temperatures that are negative one to one half degrees Celsius below the long-term average. And this plays a huge role because this actually gives off a large scale sinking motion over this part of the world. Basically, this drives a conveyor belt of sinking and rising air. And in 2015, we had the opposite effect of that where we had warmer waters and thus it led to sinking air over the Atlantic and rising air over the East Pacific. And that's where we had one of the most intense hurricanes in the East Pacific, Hurricane Patricia. That was in 2015. Now, this drives the large scale atmosphere in the Atlantic because this increases rising air over this whole entire area. So a big check mark over here and a big X over here because development is not necessarily super excited around here. We're just not going to have a super busy hurricane season in the East Pacific this year. And we should have a very busy hurricane season in the Atlantic this year. And one of the other primary factors, this is looking at a climate forecast model. So this is now talking about the future of what might be occurring for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season is specifically in the Orlando area. And this is looking at the heights. So the height anomalies, do we have large scale uh, ridging, which is basically high pressure, or do we have large scale troughing, which is low pressure. And at 500 millibars, this is about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere which ends up leading, if we move to August, the forecast here from August of 2022 on the CANSIPS forecast, we notice something very important. We have a ridge of high pressure that is anomalous so over parts of the Northeast. And this actually grows into September where we have a much larger scale ridge of high pressure in the North Atlantic. And what these tend to do is they tend to steer tropical systems further west. We have storms that typically in blocking 
uh, where you would see large scale, we don't really have a good example here, but if we were to have large scale low pressure in this area, this would mean that tropical systems could easily recurve out there. And we don't really have that. Instead, we have very large scale uh, ridging and this pushes storms further west and we could see storms get closer to Florida in the past than, than we really have within the past several years. We've been very lucky in central Florida, but I don't know if we're going to stay lucky for that long. The reoccurrence period is every couple so years, we tend to get a pretty serious threat. And really our last major threat was 2019 Hurricane Dorian. And before that was 2017 Hurricane Irma and then 2018 Hurricane Michael. But specifically in the Orlando area, uh, 2017 Hurricane Irma was the last major, major threat. And a, a semi-threat was Hurricane Dorian back in 2019. So uh, we've been very lucky here, but I don't know if that, that luck is going to maintain uh, with this type of pattern. And if we look at the precip anomalies, this is the precipitation anomalies for, for August, September, and October coming off another climate forecast model. And what this really indicates to me is that the Caribbean is much wetter compared to the long-term average and even all the way down here into the Florida Keys. And it's really hard to determine what areas might be impacted, but... This is definitely a signal that the Caribbean could be more active. And typically, we get most of our hurricanes in Florida that originate from the Caribbean and they move into the Gulf of Mexico and then turn northeast from there and could affect anywhere from the Florida Peninsula to the Gulf Coast states or nothing may even happen. But this is certainly a telling signal for what could occur. So I would really expect that we could deal with one to two, maybe three or four uh, real deal impacts or at least threats. Not saying that we're going to get a major hurricane impact or whatnot because that's you just can't determine that. But we could be dealing with at least a couple of significant at least threats this year. But will we be dealing with any impacts? That remains to be the question, and I don't think we can get those answers just yet. But stay tuned because as we progress through the next several months, those answer, those questions will be answered, and I think we'll have a better idea on this come by really July-ish or so. Just real quick, this is the 2022 Atlantic Hurricane Season names. This is the names from A to W. So we have Alex, Bonnie, Colin, Daniela, Earl, Finone, uh, Gaston, Hermine. Hermine was used in 2016. Uh, Ian, Julia, Carl, I believe that was used in 2016 as well. Uh, Lisa, Martin, Nicole, Owen, Paula, uh, Richard, Sherry, Tobias, Regini, and Walter, those are the 2022 Atlantic Hurricane season names. And there's, there is a supplement list, which I don't have pulled up right now, but I'll be sure uh, to pull those up in the next video. So if you guys want to stay tuned, we'll be covering more of these type of impacts. Again, uh, if you guys have any specific areas that you want to see, I will be talking about those over the next several days. So leave those in the comment section down below. And we often do regular outlooks like these and general outlooks as well and when we chase we will be chasing hurricanes and you guys can join live stream from right from my car so you guys will be able to kind of feel like you're actually there chasing along all right that being said hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course i am mike romali i'll talk to you guys again some more over the next few days